okay yeah good evening friends a uh, very warm welcome to all of you as a part of birth centenary celebrations of dr b kurian today we are going to have a talk on the theme producer organizations challenges and opportunity by none other than dr nd belawadi ex executive director nddb i would like to introduce dr belawadi uh, dr belawadi has served the dairy industry for more than 40 years he joined nddb in 1972 and worked in various capacities at various locations during his illustrious career in nddb dr belawadi was actively involved in implementation of operation flood program and played a transformational role in in, in strengthening and uh, this producer organizations also during his tenure in nddb he provided leadership in cooperative institutions building productivity enhancement training and capacity building and initiating and implementing new generation cooperatives he retired from the services of nddb in december 2011 but has continued to mentor and guide producer organizations dr belawadi has served on board of several dairy cooperatives and allied organizations he is amongst the very few stalwarts who have spent their lifetime in service of producer and producer institutions true to the philosophy of our founder chairman dr b kurian sir we are privileged to have you with us on this occasion to deliver a talk on producer organizations challenges and opportunity as a part of dr b kurian leadership lecture series and look look forward to an engaging sessions uh friends the format format for this session involves a talk by the speaker followed by questions and answer session those who are interested to ask questions may send their questions in the comments uh, section we shall put those questions to dr belawadi after his session on the topic sir please now stage is now yours sir uh thank you so much uh, am i audible to everyone yes sir okay uh thanks for the introduction and the kind words spoken by you uh i deem it a pleasure speaking to the audience on this occasion that is when you are celebrating the birth centenary year of dr varghese kurian uh it is only befitting that uh, one speaker who was so which was so beloved viewed cooperatives in a much different way compared to what the traditional cooperatives cooperators and the gatives and for disbursement of doles and subsidy this situation has not changed much over the year i just saw a recent advertisement uh, in times of india uh, a full page advertisement giving uh, total credit to the chief minister of the state for reducing the consumer price of a popular brand of milk of a large cooperative so what does it speak up this only goes to state that public perception as well as the government is that the co-ops are you know another arm of the government they just treat like that but as dr kurian of course had a different view he always felt expressed strongly and advocated that cooperatives should be considered as businesses independently owned by the user member user owned enterprises cooperatives should be governed democratically by elected representatives of the members they should have autonomy in decision making they should be managed by professionals who are accountable to the board of the organization and co-ops should of course she always said they should have a level playing field with all other types of businesses this is what he worked for he exemplified with amul providing the leadership and then as a founder chairman of nddb he and his colleagues i would say 
chose cooperatives as the institutional form for implementation of Operation Flood program. So it is the benefit of his leadership that NDDB has. And consequently, when it comes to promoting and developing producer organizations, I do not think there is any other organization in the country which can match with the efforts and initiatives of NDDB when it comes to development of cooperatives. There may be other organizations which are financed for cooperatives, which may be uh, undertaking education programs, training programs and all. But NDDB got evolved as not just as a financing agency, but a techno-financial body helping cooperatives, assisting cooperatives in several ways. NDDB's approach in the replication of on and model of cooperatives was unique and it encompassed a number of initiatives and activities all aimed at promoting the growth and development of cooperatives. You may, many of you who joined NDDB at the later stage may not be aware that in the early 70s, when Operation Flood program was taken up, NDDB recruited young graduates representing different disciplines, got them trained thoroughly in Amul. Amul by Amul, I mean Kaira District Cooperative Mixed Producers Union the mother organization of all cooperatives in Gujarat. That is what I would say. And then later on, the federation was formed much later in early 70s. So all of us, I too, had the privilege of joining dairy board in the early stages when Operation Flood program was to be initiated. So we got thoroughly trained. And you know, Dr. Kurian used to be the help at the helm of affairs those days. And she decided that all of us should undergo a thorough training in Amul. And later on, subsequently, once we had completed the training programs, there were, you know, what you call a spirit team constituted by NDDB. These were multidisciplinary teams which were constituted, and then they were deployed to different milk sheds in the country. And the milk sheds were chosen in such a way that they could be linked with the markets, the then existing markets, major markets, which were Delhi, Kolkata, Ch Chennai, and Mumbai. And these milk sheds were chosen in such a way for organizing cooperatives, they could be linked with the market because Dr. Kurian had demonstrated and firmly believed that if you have to see the success of cooperatives, growth of cooperatives, market linkage is a prime consideration. So that is how it was done. As the co-ops were being formed in the milk sheds, simultaneously, the commodity assistance that NDDB had received was used, was monetized, was supplied to these existing dairies in these four major cities, and they were also used to displace the traditional milk vendors who were supplying milk to these, uh, you know, contractors who were supplying milk to these major metro dairies, which were all managed by the government then and they were all adulterated milk. So these commodities were, were in the short term used to displace the traditional vendor supply and have them replaced by the supplies from cooperatives. That is how cooperatives were helped to grow. When there were about 30, 40, 50 cooperatives organized in each of the milk sheds, they were formed into milk unions. We all assisted the producer members in joining and forming into milk unions and it was at that time NDDB again stepped in and helped the unions in setting up processing facilities and feed plants and such other things. So the facilities started getting created. So initial stage, it was spirit team, which was deployed to get hands-on experience. Subsequently, we became trainer for the cooperatives. We helped in recruiting personnel of the cooperatives, of the federations, and trained them and they started taking over the job of organizing cooperatives. And NDDB started playing a supporting role. It's a massive training program which was under, programs which were undertaken during the 70s and early 80s. In the 80s, when the requirement from NDDB officers to be deployed to milk unions and uh, was not so much, we deployed only a two-member team or seconded officers wherever it was required and all. And training was the, uh, you know, 
basic thing, uh, primary thing that we focused on. Subsequently, you know, there were cases where NDDB had to support some of the unions and federations where there were, they were not doing well. There were problems. They were not able to come up because of various issues and all. So at the request of the government, say, for example, Rajas uh, Bihar and Rajasthan, NDDP took up the task of turn around, the, turning around the sick unions and all that, and putting back the management back into the hands of the producer's representative. This job also was undertaken. NDDP did not stop at this. Dr. Kurian and his team recognized fully well that if cooperatives have to be developed, they also need supporting infrastructure. In the early 80s, when it was a time that, you know, there was a monopoly situation of equipment manufacturers, daily equipment. So this monopoly had to be broken. Otherwise, they were dictating terms, price and all. So that was the stage NTDB decided to set up initially, persuade Hindustan Machine Tools to set up a dairy equipment manufacturing company in Aurangabad. Subsequently, NDDB set up its own subsidiary company, IDMC. So these were the steps that were taken as supporting infrastructure. Similarly, Irma was set up in order to meet the increasing manpower needs of the co-op. Subsequently, it was also said there is a need for setting up, you know, vaccine production, biologicals, and all. This all happened from early 80s onwards, and all that. All such efforts went by. So that not just organizing cooperatives, helping them in marketing, helping them in trading, manpower support, and all that, it was also felt there is a strong need for these supporting infrastructures which will strengthen the cooperatives. This is, uh, these were some of the things I think NDDP saw, and it was also felt over the time that there is a technology intervention which is needed for enhanced transparency and fairness in transacting with the milk producer method. So therefore, things like, you know, milk testers, electronic milk testers, and, you know, subsequently bulk milk coolers and all that came up to be used by the dairy cooperatives and all. And there was an extending R&D effort, research and development effort of NDDP in order to help the co-op in several manner, all these things and all that, equipment designing and manufacturing and all that. Besides all these, NDDP engineers took up the job of turnkey execution of dairy product, uh, projects and all that. So all these things then added to the financing a good management information system, all these measures, I would say, help the growth of the dairy cooperatives in the country. It was, uh, Dr. Kurian had always felt that cooperatives are constrained by the, in their growth, because of the obstacles in terms of the legislation. There are impediments in the legislation. He felt that the Law that governs the cooperatives are is uh, the laws that govern are antiquated. They need reforms. They need to be changed. Cooperatives should be treated on par with companies. That is what he had in view. He had seen. He had advocated. He was strongly, uh, you know, speaking about these issues. Speaking about the experiences of New Zealand, Denmark, and all these places where. A single law encompasses different types of organizations, including cooperatives and all that. So she spoke of the need for cooperative companies as early as early 90s. Even before that, she used to speak of cooperative companies. And, you know, in somewhere in early 90s, she and a few other cooperatives, cooperators joined together. They formed into a cooperative initiative panel. They undertook extensively advocacy efforts in order to bring about changes in the cooperative legislation. Andhra Pradesh state was the first one to bring about a parallel cooperative law. And NDDB helped. Immediately after this law was enacted, NDDB helped all those milk unions and dairy cooperatives which were there in Andhra Pradesh mm -hmm. under the traditional cooperative act to shift from the old act to the new law. They helped in you know, uh, the return of the share capital by these unions to the government and to ensure that there is no government guarantee, all such measures were taken. 
I would say all, and there was a model act enacted, uh, recommended by the, to the planning commission, NDDB worked on that. Subsequently, amendment to the multi-state cooperative societies act, which came about much later. Of course, Dr. Kurian's vision and dream that company law should have both type of enterprises, both private, public limited, as well as cooperative farms, uh, came into a reality only sometime by early 2000. Uh, though he was advocating very strongly and the draft was prepared, it was taken up with the ministry, but somehow it did not materialize during his period. I would say all such efforts of NDDB and Dr. Kurian's leadership uh, has put us in the global dairy map and the number one country in the world as far as milk production. Cooperatives became the trendsetter as far as systems of milk procurement, processing, and uh, marketing of milk and all that. They became the trendsetters in organizing efficiently small milk producers and collecting small surpluses of milk and arranging to test them and make payment every day, all such things and all. So all these efforts have led to today what we see probably about 200 or milk unions federated into the state dairy federations, around two lakh, uh, they, uh, you know, village dairy cooperatives. I think two lakh village dairy cooperatives means almost one fourth of the total cooperatives in the country. India has about 8,50,000 cooperatives. So our dairy cooperatives operate in around 70% of the districts in the country. They are present in about 24% of the villages, as I read from some reports of NDDB. And they cover about 22% of the producer households, marketing around 20% of the marketable surplus. Uh, dairy, uh, handling about 20% of the marketable surplus. I think this is a phenomenal thing that has happened. I think dairy co-ops have proved that aggregating smallholders into farmer-producer organizations is a proven pathway to improve bargaining power, move up the value chain, and improve access to inputs, technology, and markets. Aggregation, surely, is the only way to enable small and marginal farmers to exploit emerging opportunities, domestic and global. In the current, I, uh, we know, we, we are all aware that all our dairy cooperatives are faced with continuing competition. There are big players, there are multinationals who have come into the country. There are large private players also. There are also unorganized ones. I think this will only increase this competition and co-ops have to manage amidst all this uh, competition, competing environment. But one thing is sure, if the co-ops fail in an area, surely in that area, the producers or the members or the milk producers who are small and marginal are sure to get exploited. I have seen from my own eyes, when a large cooperative which was flourishing in Andhra Pradesh, in Chittur district, which failed, which used to handle about three lakh liters of milk a day, and it failed miserably, because of inadequacies in governance, because of uh, um, you know, various other problems, inherent inadequacies, not just because of the comp emerging competition in the area. So when it failed, and when the milk collection dropped to only a few thousand liters, that was when a big player who stepped in, who had a political backing, and started giving a price of just about I think it was just around six to seven rupees per liter in in 2002-2003, when in the neighboring district milk price used to be about 12 to 13 rupees. So this is what illustrates when a cooperative fails, what happens. So cooperatives actually are very powerful instruments to you know as a as a uh, they they serve as a countervailing force against any possible exploitation of the smallholder producers by the other institutions and multinational corporations. I don't, uh, I'm not intending any ill for the private companies or multinational corporations. They are very efficient and all. 
but when it comes to i have always seen the benchmark their prices to a uh, uh, with a with a with a cooperative which is functioning in the area this is true with most of the private companies and all you know we have seen in the post liberalization period that with the increasing competition there is a need for not just surviving growing and there are there are macroeconomic changes it is inevitable for the co-ops to reorient themselves by improving their efficiency effectiveness and adaptability but somehow you know when when you look back when you see even now while we have good examples large numbers good numbers maybe out of 200 milk unions i am sure maybe 100 and dot may be doing very well ndtb has all the statistics and all the figures i do not have but it's my guess that surely they are doing pretty well and competing and growing and all that but i think we need to recognize there are some inadequacies the inadequacies are i think they are fundamental in nature some of them what is fundamental in nature one is as a cooperative enterprise you have to practice one member one vote which puts all members irrespective of their patronage on an equal footing in matters of governance including election and major decisions which are required to be taken and all these decisions are taken by the general body there are many decisions which should be taken by the board but they are actually to be taken by the general body then we have political parties as who are actively involved in capturing board positions and this has become a common feature we all know that i don't think much change can be brought about in this but i think we need to keep you know note this and see what can be done as far as governance is concerned co-ops are not you know another flaw with the cooperative so you compare a public limited company with a cooperative many cooperatives or i am sure about 100 and odd our milk unions are big businesses comparable to any other uh, private industry any other private companies and all that but they are not our cooperatives are not subject to external scrutiny by skilled investor financial analyst analyst rating agencies all there in case of others and the public and the investor come to know at the website you go to the site and look at the company you can see quarterly uh, financials you can you can see all the figures and there are you know on tv you have all those pundits coming and speaking about you know trends and market and what is happening with each company and all that so unfortunately we do not have that we, we because our owners are our milk producers they are also generally unable to enhance member equity our co-op or capital from members and this remains a, and therefore many co-ops are increasingly dependent on government equity and therefore when you say government equity what happens we know the consequences we have seen that we also know that they suffer from a serious free rider problem what do you mean by free rider problem we have say 1 lakh members in a cooperative but maybe about 30 or 40000 are only actively participating the remaining are not maybe they are not there at all their names are not struck out from the registers because the removing membership cancelling membership is all this a laborious process and the law comes in the way and finally you have to go to general body and then there is an appeal and there is politics and all these things so you cannot clean up the process so easily the law comes in the way and it is not just this you have you know many who have left dairy business but therefore they cannot member anymore and there are also you know changes taking place in the profile of the member when a cooperative is formed it is you know you have more of homogeneity a lot of homogeneity but after some years the profile changes the next generation maybe aggregation of land holding aggregation of animal holding change its structure and maybe in place of 1 lakh there may be only 70000 80000 members and all that and all the changes actually necessitate need you know uh, the need to think about changing the services needs of the members and all that so these things also 
you know, lead to, you know, what you call as a free rider problem, I would say. I think crops are also constrained by the overwhelming role of the government as well as prescriptive and, as I said, re restrictive legislation. They have not been able to retain an autonomous and democratic character and function as professionally managed. Professional managed enterprise, because even now in many cases, I'm sure that you have to go to the government or to the registrar to get an approval for fixing the salaries or, you know, service conditions and things like that. There are many such impediments. There are also issues of, you know, long-term strategic planning, organization policies, and resource mobilization. All these get affected because that sort of orientation has not been there with many of the boards and all that. Also, I thought that, you know, sometime in the early 90s, there were excellent studies conducted by IRMA, and there was a symposium of several days, which brought out a number of insights to the functioning of the cooperatives, to the lacunas that we observed, what characteristics should be taken and all that. But I think subsequently, such attempt has not gone by. Research and in-depth studies of cooperatives and documentation of experiences of successful cooperatives, as well as those who have failed, are of the immense value. But they are not there for long. I have not seen them. It, is, it has not been there. And whereas these are regular features in developed countries, in, in cooperatives developed, cooperatively developed countries like United States, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, all, all these. They engage academicians to come out with studies and all that. One of the studies, you know, which was presented uh, sometime about uh, a, a decade and a half ago in NDDB had organized some overseas consultants coming and speaking about their experiences, academicians speaking about their experiences, the studies that they have conducted. Professor Michael Cook of um, Missouri University spoke about the life cycle theory that how cooperative, uh, uh, you know, member profile changes and with the member profile changing, what sort of tinkering actions have to be taken if you don't do what happens with the cooperative and you have to bring about structural changes and all such, you know, these things are happening outside, but unfortunately not so much here. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I think uh, given this scenario or background, I would say that one is, a prime thing is, if we have to make an effort for strengthening the cooperatives, our dairy cooperatives, specifically I appeal to NDDP, that I think we should revisit those studies and we should engage an institution like IRMA or anybody else in order to again get back and uh, do some studies, bring up some papers, and conduct some research, and and uh, and I think hold something. I think this will bring some uh, learnings for us as to what sort of corrective steps should be taken, as to how do we go about if we have to strengthen our governance, strengthen our management, improve the communication with members. I'm sure you all agree with the digitization and improvement in communication methods and. Uh, you know, all these things, I think we have, we have to think de novo. We have to do many things which were unlearned, many things which, uh, which we were doing in the past and do something new uh, in order to improve member participation, governance, and all that. That's one aspect of it. I, we also need to take into account the recent three laws based, uh, you know, which have been enacted by the government of India the farm laws, the Farmer Produce Trade and Commerce Act, you know, uh, which overrides all that APMC's uh, strict chat. Now the farmers are therefore free to organize themselves and therefore they can conduct their business outside the APMC. There are no more restrictions to handle everything in APMC. Milk is different, but I'm speaking of other, uh, other, other possibilities, other uh, uh, items, agriculture produce. There is also a law that uh, the government enacted that is Farmers, uh, you know, Agreement of Price Assurance Farm Services Act. That is nothing but, you know, enabling the farmers in, uh, to engage in contract farming. 
we know well farmers individually it is impossible to dream of getting into contract farming but i am sure it will provide substantial scope for farmer organizations producer organizations to get into contracts to to farm into farm organizations and get into contracts for supplies and provide a market access there is also your amendment that to the essential commodities act you know which has removed all those restrictions with respect to the produce hold holding moving distributing and supply of the produce and all that i think knowing well that the farmers as individuals would not be in a position to avail the benefit of this legislation ministry has also announced a large scheme for formation of farmer producer organizations fpos fpos could be milk producer companies or you know co-ops formed under the liberal act which are which is there in some states so therefore i think there is a good opportunity for ndp and such organizations particularly in fruits and vegetable sector look at india's position in fruits and vegetable sector we stand second in the world in fruits and vegetable production and according to national account statistics 2019 horticulture accounted for about 40% of the value of the total agriculture crop perishability and predominantly small holding nature of horticulture therefore augurs well for cooperative type of organization i think there is some study needed in this there was a you know while while i speak of producer companies and producer organizations fpos i think i i, I am afraid that in some respects we are getting into a number game some time ago about a year and a half ago or two years ago azim premji university conducted a study of you know uh, a sample study of farmer producer organizations they found that many of them a large percentage of them are uh, may not be viable they not they, they would not be sustainable they seem to be dependent heavily on subsidies and doles and such things like that to survive this is not a very rosy picture i think this is alarming i think ndtb also need to look at this aspect uh, ndtb through its subsidiary nds has already demonstrated the method and the design principles that should be adopted and a systematic way by which we should go when we have to organize a producer company the 15 and dot dairy companies which have been set up are uh, are good examples not that they are perfect there is a lot of improvements needed there also but i am sure that that is one good learning that we have i think it is time that we get into other produce also there is also one thing that i thought it is very important the corporate ministry data shows that as against about 20 lakh registered companies which were there as on june 2020 about 7 lakh have been actually closed they are not shying away from closing so we have only about 13 lakh and our active companies companies of all types under the corporate affairs ministry but in case of cooperatives we have about 8.5 lakh cooperatives but everybody knows a good number of them a, a sizable percentage of cooperatives are unviable and they are there probably uh, they have not been liquidated they may be defunct they have not been closed down why shy away from this now now that there is a ministry of uh, cooperatives can ndtb be pursue persuade the ministry and see that some similar action is taken why do we need such big number instead of having 8 lakh 50000 if we have about 4 lakh vibrant you know uh, uh, cooperatives which are growing which are from time from strength to strength and are competing well and are serving their members i think that is what we need not the big number i would also urge ndtb to use this opportunity you know sometime back say about i think when national dairy plan was conceived and was to be taken forward we did engage indian institute of management and indian institute of bangalore management amdavad and indian institute of management bangalore both to conduct a study of our large milk union some about 100 and odd milk unions were studied they looked into the financials 
they looked into the governance management and structural things and all these issues and came out with a good report professor mm. shriram was there i don't remember who else they did come out with a good report and the report also suggested that in order to plug in some inadequacies that exist in these structures there is also a need for change in the legislation they suggested that on the lines of vaidyanathan committee's recommendation you know vaidyanathan committee it looked into the credit cooperatives in the country they made a recommendation for amending the act specifically meant for those credit cooperatives that is for urban cooperative banks primary agriculture cooperatives state cooperative banks and uh, encompassing all these they said that the relevant clauses and legislation meant for these structures should be amended and they came out with a set of amendments and that was adopted by the states and now each of the cooperative act each of the state cooperative act has a has some specific provisions applicable for credit cooperatives i know it is difficult but in case of dairy cooperatives we are actually more than one fourth of the number nearly one fourth of the number total why don't we say that we should have also some specific provisions meant for dairy cooperatives in order to enable improved governance and improved management ensure professional management provide good reasonably good autonomy so that they can come out of the clutches of the bureaucratic uh, uh, procedures and therefore they can be free to act and they, and they could be in a, this could be an attempt to bring them on line uh, with the other corporates with, uh, in, because they need to compete with them and this in other words could be an attempt to uh, create a level playing field that is one aspect i think we should also vigorously pursue where co-ops have not done well uh where the uh where there is substantial scope as i said we are still in about only 23% or 25% of the villages or whatever it is and the coverage is still there is a huge potential for covering the more and more members more and more producers and bring them under the fold of the cooperatives so we could take up in such areas uh formation of producer companies or uh, whatever it is those those things also could be taken up i thought i should share these points with you as uh, my thoughts for you know uh, some some improvements that can be brought about some measures that could be taken by ngdb and other organizations and the government uh, to strengthen dairy cooperative structure and also the cooperatives in general uh i thank you all for giving me this opportunity to speak on this subject and uh, if there are any questions i'll be happy to uh, reply to them to the best of my ability and understanding thank you thank you very much sir uh, we thank you for your enlightening uh, thought on this subject role of cooperatives and their strengthening and what should they do and how it can be further strengthened for the benefit of the mass sir so what about uh, as you suggested with the new leadership and ddb has proceeded in this direction and a lot of new initiative new things have been uh, uh, being taken up by this ndb to extend uh, cooperatives producer companies also and we are sure that in future the sector is doing all uh, such things uh, sir we have got some questions mr subir mitra he has asked one questions uh, that as on 2018 and 19 out of 185 dairy co-ops there were 75 dairy co-ops who were in net accumulated loss what do you think should be ndb should be ndb's role in turning around these co-ops can producer company model add in this process on sitting ducks to be taken up by private companies not by uh, taken over by these uh, institutions but capturing their well set up milk set area 
how do you perceive this threat from massive private dairy uh, consolidations taking place now it's a good question i think uh, if ndb is uh, the ndb and those who are there in those in the areas where uh, this there are failed cooperatives you said out of 200 about 75 is it isn't it yes sir 185 uh, out of 185 75 about 75 do not seem to be doing well yeah. i my, my view is that we should make a sincere effort to uh, strengthen them without you know uh, resorting to closing or liquidating and things like that we should make a very sincere effort to strengthen them we could have a dialogue with them and if they need a support from ndb in terms of manpower or whatever it is i think that should be provided as was done in the past that should be the first left thing i think if it is a totally gone case if the unions if there are areas where the unions have become defunct and it is beyond remedy where the network is actually negative where there is a huge accumulated losses and it is not possible to revive i think such cases we could consider in my view for forming new structure it could be a producer company i i i feel uh, these two things could be considered okay thank you sir another is question is by ashok kumar gupta he is asking that what should be effective strategy to improve government governance in dairy co-ops by engaging board of directors for making dairy business viable and daily uh, delivers service orientations bringing in former happiness index um uh, i think it's very important uh, that board should be uh, board training and board orientation cannot be treated as a one time affair you know if you take dr kurian's example himself what role he played he was the chief executive of kaira milk union for a long time but he as a professional was also playing a role of educating the board members from time to time sitting with them making them understand about the business about the intricacies of you know taking decisions and all such things and all he did play a role i'm sure and therefore he gained a lot of respect professionals have a very vital role in this after all you should understand that where does the board come from board after all represents milk producer from the villages many of them may not be well educated may not be having a orientation towards business they will not have the exposure for business so therefore their understanding would be limited it takes time to bring about that understanding it cannot be just one time training those organizations which can give training but training has to go on on a continuous basis periodically and in addition to that of course this alone will not help bold there are today the problems also are the bonds of many of our cooperatives including milk unions engage in such actions and activities which they should not be the board steps into the matters which are to be taken care of by the chief executive and chief executive sometimes steps into the area which should be taken care of by the boards so there is a lack of role clarity there is a problem of role clarity there is also a problem of understanding their roles clearly this is again because also because board does not trust properly the chief executive therefore board does not delegate powers to the chief executive when you delegate powers when you delegate authority you have to make the chief executive accountable you have to make the chief executive responsible for results so unless you have accountability authority and responsibility go hand in hand it will not work the board has to understand this so this actually brings into life what successful co-ops abroad have adopted that is called as policy governance board's role should be restricted to enacting policies monitoring policies monitoring the organization's performance monitoring chief executive's performance and you know such 
few matters, policy issues related to member, mem member issues to be handled. And those are the roles of board. Whereas chief executive should have a lot of authority, responsibility and all. But that's not happening. So all this have to go. All this have to be done. But it's not so simple. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So another question is by Ms. Anandita. She is asking, uh, these days, focus on institutional building effort is not seen in most of the cooperatives. What uh, would be your suggestion to strengthen this process once again? Yeah, you know, some time ago, maybe probably in late 80s and 90s, NDDB took up some initiatives of helping cooperatives with some institution building efforts. They, uh, NDDB helped the co-ops in undertaking member education initiatives, member awareness programs, women involvement initiatives, board programs, management committee training, all such measures and all that. NDDB was supporting financially and all that. The moment that was stopped, most of the union stopped all these activities and all. The bonus and responsibility of undertaking member communication, member education, member awareness programs and all this has to lie with the co-op themselves. Indeed, we can only trigger that. We cannot be keep on, we cannot keep on uh, financing these the measures. I don't think it is never ever possible, feasible. So therefore, it, the responsibility should rest with the co-op themselves. This sort of realization has to be brought about in the board and the chief executives. The board should realize, the chief executive should realize. Unfortunately, many places, what the, the, the board and chief executives perceive, that more you educate the members, more you uh, communicate with them, there may be more problems. It's not true. I think we cannot uh, do away with communication and such efforts and all that. Now we have better methods of communication, reaching out to farmers and all that. So we should continue to do this. I am sure Kaira Milk Union and all such unions in Gujarat continue to do this. Banaskata is an example, excellent example. The other day I was thrilled to see the way they have grown, handling about 70 lakh liters of milk a day and uh, paying probably the highest price and growing from strength to strength. So it's, they should take their responsibility. Thank you, sir. Sir, last question. Uh, Mr. Om Prakash Singh is asking if major cooperatives are not, not, not viable, then what are your advice to PCs so that they can uh, not even sustain themselves but can be repl replicated also? If they are not viable, if they are not cannot sustain, if there is no potential for viability, then if there is no potential, if you have gone and organized a co-op in an area where there is no potential, there is no marketable surplus adequate enough to make them sustainable. And if there are such other issues, I don't think we should shy away from closing down. That's what I could say. But if there is a potential, I think there are various other methods, as I mentioned earlier. We can have another institutional form taking over. Okay, sir. So, Mr. K. Trivedi uh, is also interested to ask a question. Uh, yeah. No, I just, no, yes, yeah. Yeah. It just as a comment, you know, I, I like your suggestion for taking up studies and research. Uh, I, I would just make a suggestion that NDP should continue to do research and studies. Say, one of the things could be done is that we have a very large number of cooperative unions which we set up under Operation Flood. There are some who are very successful and then some are not successful. Why can't yes. NDDP should take up a study and understand that why certain number of cooperatives are, or union or federation are successful? They have done a good job for a period of time and certain cooperatives have not done it yet. What are the reasons? It's not just a physical progress to be chased, but, yeah. to, look the, but to look at the environment under which uh, certain unions work, certain unions work, and why certain unions in the similar environment are successful, in the same environment certain unions are not successful. And a, a research and study should be done in, uh, large study, it should not just a small small study which normally NDP does in, and satisfy themselves. 
what is required in these situations is to take a larger view of multidisciplinary and look at the environment under which unions and federations work and some succeed some don't succeed why they succeed why they succeeded and why they did not succeed and second thing one must to also understand that those who are successful will they continue to succeed in the future it might not because maybe there are certain environmental factors which are affecting maybe very successful cooperatives in union should we look at 20 years now will they be will the same enterprising or not so that kind of study and it is we should take in my view and your suggestion of taking up continuing study and research is very very important which ndtb should focus on i entirely agree with you dr trivedi i think this is very important uh, there are lot of things that we learn from the failures as well why they have failed and all that you know uh, i i still uh, advocate this professor michael cooks life cycle study uh, it's very very important as co-ops are formed after some years their whole structure and governance management everything we need to have a real look at it because of both internal changes as well as the macro economic changes that have taken place competing forces and all other changes that have taken place you know in domestic and international trade tariff changes all such all these things matter a lot i think it's very important that comprehensive study is undertaken uh, of uh, several of the large co-ops thank you okay sir thank you trivedi sir uh, thank now you, sir. thank you very much so this is the end of the session uh, i thank you a lot sir for giving your uh, precious time and sharing your thoughts over cooperatives and uh, uh, producer companies and how to make them successful we are really thankful to you and most probably will try to uh, take a walk uh, what you have talked today i thank you and i thanks all the participants my colleagues and all those who have made this program successful i thank you a lot thanks a lot sir thank you thank you